It's amazing to think that Apex Legends is now over two years old. Releasing in March 2019, Apex Legends was probably the biggest game to ever drop with zero marketing at all. It was literally Respawn going, by the way, here's our new Battle Royale. It's out now. Go play it if you want for free. The game reached 50 million players within two days of its launch. It became a huge talking point and respect for Respawn Entertainment went up dramatically. Whilst it wasn't Titanfall 3, which a lot of us hoped for, it was set in the Titanfall universe universe and featured Titanfall gunplay and some of its movement system. It really was something special and I loved playing this game when it first came out. Two years later Apex Legends is still really strong. It's got a loyal following, an esports scene and Respawn seemed dedicated to keep it running the best it can be with new heroes, constant rebalancing, regular updates and communication as well as stories and seasonal events. After playing it loads at the beginning however my love for Apex Legends died a little bit but mainly because other games came into the fold and I was never the biggest fan of battle royales but recently during my streams on Twitch I've been playing a lot more of Apex Legends seeing what's changed learning the new legends playing some of the new events and honestly it's just been fun to get back into the game however after doing a poll on my community tab asking what you guys thought about this game I thought it was finally time to give my thoughts on Apex Legends what I liked about this game from the start what improvements I like how it feels to play now but also the things I really don't don't like about the game as well as where I hope it goes in the future. So in today's video we are going to talk about Apex Legends and see how it holds up in 2021. As I mentioned in my introduction, Apex Legends was a revolutionary game when it came out. Before it, I don't think any other game could get the same stats that Apex did with so many players in just a matter of days. And there was a reason for that. It was never hyped up to great expectations. It didn't spend thousands on trying to market itself. It just sat down and went, look, here's a game we made, play it if you want, and we hope you enjoy it. And I think that resonated with people. I know it did for me, and I was straight to downloading it as soon as I saw that pop up in the advert. The second reason was because these were the guys behind the absolutely incredible FPS of Titanfall, with one of the most unique movement systems in that genre and phenomenal gunplay to go with it. How could you not be excited for a battle royale game mode by these guys who proved themselves to be masters of the FPS? The game being completely free also was just what won me over. That was probably what helped it to get those numbers in the first week. But for me there was so much to love about Apex when I first played the game. To start with, the gunplay as mentioned was incredible, I still stand by that. It's some of the finest gunplay I've played with in any shooter. It kept that familiarity that Titanfall had with a lot of the guns passing over into the game. The way the guns handled were also unique, from the incredibly powerful close quarter shotguns to the SMGs all the way through to snipers. Everything handled their own way and were all fun to use. Mozambique, even though it became the meme gun and even respawn themselves made fun of it was fun to use. It made dropping into the game nerve-wracking when it's you and another guy and the only gun available was that one. Usually the fists would win though but that just made it so much more fun. The designs of all the guns were fantastic and still to this day I absolutely love the Prowler design and the Peacemaker. Two incredible looking guns in my opinion and I loved carrying these when the game first came out. The second thing I loved about the game was the mobility. Now let's be honest it isn't Titanfall style of mobility set Badly. It's much slower and wall running isn't a thing which is a real shame. But the devs at the time did say that was simply because in testing it just didn't work. However saying that being able to slide and wall climb really added more to encounters and allowed for some really interesting ways of getting about and outmaneuvering your enemies. Still to this date respawn's movement within games is better than anything else I can think of and it's really hard to go into other games if they don't have slides or if it's just a much slower paced game. It's really great fun to run, slide, climb and outmaneuver your enemies. The third thing that appealed to me when the game dropped was the team dynamics. Utilising the heroes with different abilities and making it a squad of three or two was in my opinion a great direction. I know a few people disliked the fact that when this game came out it didn't have a solo option, something the rivals had.
had. But for me, always being in a squad felt far more enjoyable. And with the different abilities from the heroes, it allowed players the chance to experiment with tactics. Having a healer, an offensive, and a mobile character made encounters so much different to anything else in that genre. It was like a perfect combination of a good FPS battle royale with the hero mechanics of something like Overwatch. It was and still is great to get that right dynamic as a team. And when you do get that battle royale victory, the feeling of victory is just so sweet. We then have to talk about the thing that for me has now become an industry standard, the ping system. The ping system was revolutionary as it allowed people from everywhere to communicate with each other without having to worry about using the mic or speaking a different language or just physically not being able to talk due to a disability or something. Here through a push of a button you could alert people to guns, locations, items, enemies and so many other things. Not only that but you had the characters stating out loud what that ping was about. It's fantastic for accessibility. It meant so many people could play this game in a group without worrying about losing communication or for people like me who don't really like playing with randoms on games like this. It was really like an open door for me to be able to play with randoms and not be limited by communications. In fact I love it so much that I'm annoyed if a new multiplayer game comes out without a ping system. It should be an industry staple now and all games should have it. The final thing I love about the base game was the map layout. Apex Legends did this fantastic thing with its map where every location felt like its own enclosed area where battles would take place. Once you got into an area like the Swamplands it was surrounded by tall cliffs and high points meaning that when you got into a battle with someone you had to fight back. If you tried to run you would be hindered by the tall cliffs slowing down your movement leaving you an absolute sitting duck. It just brought players into combat areas and I really loved that every location was so different from the last with tons of loot, tons of cover and buildings and so many items that allow you to slide, climb and fly across the map using zip wires. It was and still is a fantastic map design and I still love how it almost forces players to face the enemy in front of them. The original Apex Legends was just so exciting, it revolutionised battle royales for me. I couldn't get into Fortnite because I wasn't a fan of the third person view and also when someone builds a structure the size of the Eiffel Tower in a few seconds in front of me during a gunfight I realised this isn't the game for me. And at the time Call of Duty's Blackout just had so many problems that I just couldn't get into it. Apex had fantastic movement, an incredibly inclusive ping system that allowed for immediate communication with your teammates, great unique weapons with additional attachments to them and honestly a fantastic map. It was the first time a battle royale really resonated with me but after season 2 I started to drop off. But now going back there are a lot of things that Respawn have added to the game that I really love but also a lot that I don't like about this game. So I'll start with the positives. One thing that I always hated about some battle royales was the shield system, especially with Call of Duty and Apex. Sometimes the RNG was just really poor and I'd find myself losing gunfights not just because I was bad or my accuracy was awful, but because the enemy found a better shield before me and they could just sort of get away with a lot more than I could with a weaker shield. It meant that I spent a ton of the game just searching for a better shield and if I made it to the end game you could guarantee I didn't stand a chance against anyone who had found the best shields throughout gunfights or anything. I know I sound like I'm making excuses but sometimes I felt the RNG made for some horrible experiences. However in season 6 they introduced this incredible new feature of the Evo shield where it upgraded over time the more damage you dealt. This in my eyes was an incredible feature because like with the enclosed maps it really encouraged you to get involved in gunfights. It wants you to deal damage to enemies and rewards you for taking that initiative to engage in battle battles, giving you a better shield the more you do. It's great for early game because the more kills you get the better your equipment becomes without having to worry about whether the RNG system will help me out here. Now all you have to really worry about is skill level. If you are skilled enough to hit enemies even if you don't get kills you can get a level 3 shield pretty quickly just by sniping from a distance or engaging with enemies then pulling out. You can really tell who the best team is by the end game depending on their shield. If it's quite low they have got there simply by attrition or they have been massively weakened during the battles and the teams with the best shields have been the ones getting involved with battles.
battles and have come out victorious. Basically what I'm trying to say is I like how the game rewards you for playing the actual game. The movement of Apex is specifically designed to make it fast paced, to force players into battles from the get go, and now you have a system in place that rewards players for engaging in gunfights. It's a great new design in my view. Another thing I didn't think I would like but actually find really quite interesting is the crafting system. At first I thought it was a cheap way of holding back items that drop on the ground and couldn't really see how they benefit the game, but I don't know why, but I like the thrill of seeing that the only way to get a level 3 helmet is crafting one, getting to a replicator, requesting it, see it release a pulse to anyone in the area and waiting for it, hoping a team doesn't come in ambushing me and my team and stealing our stuff. I just feel it adds a new element to the loot system and it's great when you are able to ambush a team who are crafting and stealing their stuff. Also I have to say the sound of the keyboard on the replicator is pretty satisfying, I'm not going to lie about that one. The addition of the rank system, and yeah I know it came out back in season 2 but I never really got a chance to play it then, but the addition of it is really cool and it's utilised really well. It's actually surprising Apex was able to add a good functional ranked system into its game considering how many factors there are to ranked gameplay in a battle royale. RP being rewarded for different things was a nice way of rewarding players within ranked. Getting just 5 RP in bronze for getting in the top 11 just felt like you were progressing even if you didn't get a single kill in the game. But getting kills and the win is where the big points come, obviously, and overall I think it is a great ranked system. Although in the later groups it can get really sweaty, my god it's brutal getting into the higher ranks, which is understandable. And I can imagine being in the top 750 players in the Apex Predator League is a real tough experience. One I'd imagine I would never get in in a million years, unless I get an invite from Blisk, which ain't gonna happen anytime soon. On top of that, the addition of seasonal events is pretty cool. The latest one of the ring flares in Season 8 was pretty fun. Extremely frustrating at times, but it just added a new element to the game, and the voiceover was pretty funny, and matched with the whole Fuse theme of these rock and roll Borderlands style nomads. Speaking of which, some of the newer legends are really awesome. I especially love Revenant, Horizon, and Fuse, as their designs are really cool, and their abilities add something new to the gameplay. Fuse being able to isolate a single area trapping enemies in a ring of fire makes them feel like a fish in a barrel and his knuckle grenade although OP sometimes is a nice offensive weapon that can really help early game or to draw out healing enemies from cover. Revenant's silence ability that does damage again is a similar thing for drawing out enemies and adds just another offensive option and his second life totem just allows you to once again take more risks and go full Leroy Jenkins running in trying to get kills without worrying too much about dying as you get a second chance to take out that enemy team. Horizon's abilities as well are just super cool to use and the black hole is a pretty great mechanic to use that can be really utilized well if your squad is being tactical in ranked games. I will say though there are some legends I really do not like at all. I don't really get Rampart at all. Maybe some like her because of the LMG boost but I never really enjoyed playing as her and felt her ultimate power was pretty awful. Crypto's drone is a good idea but again just never really felt like he was worth using compared to someone like Bloodhound. And Loba is good for getting loot instantly from her black market and seeing other legendary items, but her other ability is just so buggy that it drives me mad, making me not want to play her most of the time. I know I'm going into the negatives here, but it's all linked to the legends and I thought I'd mention it all together. But for me, the newer characters have some really cool looks. I absolutely love the look of Crypto and Revenant, but for me, the best legends are still still the original ones. Bloodhound is still fun to play as is Wraith and Lifeline. The new characters are cool but the only reason I play as them most of the time is because their skins look awesome and they are the newer characters who I have worked to get or in some cases paid for. But saying that the final thing I will say that's part of the positives of this game is I love the stories that come from this game. The lore behind Apex is constantly growing with every season and the cinematics we get as well as the comics release for the characters is great for building up the universe, helping us to learn 
about what the Apex games are really about, how these characters got to the way they are today, and it also really gives us an insight into where stories are going. Yes, whilst this hasn't got a campaign and it's a lot of external content like the Pathfinder book, I got to admit I really do love the storytelling behind the characters, and I hope going forward with Apex Legends we get some more interesting tales of Blisk and the Legends, as well as some other interesting characters like Revenant, a man who got turned into a simulacrum. Most of Apex Legends is the same, there have been regular updates to keep things balanced along the way, the season updates are cool and add some fun game modes, and all round the game is still a lot of fun. But over the seasons there have been changes made to the game that I just really do not like. So let's get on with the negatives from Apex Legends. Luckily there aren't too many negatives, but I do think some of the things I've noted down really do ruin some of the experiences I've had with the overall game. The first has to be the servers and the tick rate of the game. I don't know how or why a company such as EA cannot be bothered with good servers, but my god, a lot of the time Apex is just so difficult to play because of the server. Characters diving to the ground during some of the games at the start just suddenly miss their target due to a jump in the server and bang! some of your team are on a building or loot ship and you've somehow missed it. But then in gunfights sometimes you will visibly see your bullets hit yet the server will not recognize you did any damage at all. There's just a few times where the game doesn't respond the way it should. It's a fast paced game with fast gunplay and movement and yet the servers don't always match it and it just creates super frustrating moments within games. And why, why, why are they still running 20 hertz tick servers on a game like Apex Legends? Do EA just not want to spend any money on this game, making it feel fun to play? It's infuriating, but once again, it's just not surprising. The next one is that the audio doesn't always seem to reflect what is going on. A lot of the time I can hear enemy teams nearby and that makes for tense moments, but other the times two whole squads can just suddenly appear out of no absolutely nowhere from behind you and there was no audio cue to alert you to the fact that this happens, meaning you are just victim to be slaughtered. It's just inconsistent at times and I'm not sure if this is a bug in the audio or just simply the game servers messing up once again. But there is no way you would not be able to hear other teams approaching even in a gun battle. It just makes it feel super unfair. But now going into more gameplay choices, I just cannot warm to Olympus at all. Now don't get me wrong, the map looks incredible, the different zones are all so unique, the lore behind the areas are really interesting, especially with the IMC Hammond Engineering buildings, as well as the other things like the boxing ring, which is really quite funny. The cars are fun to use as well, especially in squads, but my problem is the map is so damn large and there are so many open areas, meaning it's completely different from King's Canyon, where you had nice isolated battle areas that were surrounded by high ground meaning more firefights were guaranteed. I've played on Olympus so many times and the game just lingered for ages with nothing going on because of how large the map is. I just don't enjoy it as much to play regardless of how gorgeous it is to look at and most of the time people are just running snipers all the time so it's not as engaging. Also my frame rate absolutely tanks on this map and I have no idea why. I run a high end PC and I still can't even hit 60 FPS most of the time on this map. I don't know why, I don't know if this is down to an update, but it's unbearable at times. I'm a bit annoyed World's Edge got removed as well because that would have been a nice to vary up the map changes, but Olympus and Kings are the only two and that kind of sucks as I only personally like playing at Kings. Going back to content, I just feel Apex is lacking things to do as well. It's been two years now and we have trios, doubles and ranked and then that's it. We have seasonal events as well but most of the time it's the same game modes just with a little change like with season 8's ring flares and that only lasted about three weeks. I really feel like Apex needs some more content to really help boost engagement because maybe it's just me but I do get a bit bored playing the same thing over and over and over again. Maybe that's just because I'm not the biggest BR fan and I've played Apex a 
bit too much but still the challenges battle pass and the map changes certainly help vary it up but if you are like me and don't really like olympus it makes that one hour of playing on that map absolutely unbearable especially if ranked and casual are on that specific map they came up with game modes like the train defense for christmas and whilst i didn't necessarily like that mode it was something different why can't there be more things added to this game like some basic pvp game modes or maybe some custom servers to allow me to just play with friends or experiment. The rumour is Season 9 will have arena game modes like a toned down Overwatch PvP style mode which could work really well. But for me this game has been going for two years now and apart from some cool gameplay changes and new heroes there's not much else to do. Even adding a solo mode could vary it up for some people. Maybe it's just me being picky but I just wish there were some more new refreshing game modes to play through just to change it up a bit. I'm not for one second saying Apex is a bad game or it's boring, but I just wish there was more instead of just three ways to play. This is just a personal thing for me, and if Season 9 rumours are true, it should be a very, very interesting season for the game. Actually saying that, I wish the club had a bit more to it as well. I set one up called the Wise Fish Legends, feel free to join, but other than being able to see how your club mates do in games, there is nothing to gain from it. I feel like you should get club accessories for playing together or something. Honestly, other than some club logos and some badges that you can get for your characters, I really don't see the point in it apart from being a place to chat with your friends. But most of the time you'll do that in Discord. I guess maybe it's for ranked teams to organise events, but still, I feel like it could have more things to do in it to encourage players to join clubs. But finally, my biggest problem with Apex in 2021 is, once again, the microtransactions. Now I have to say, yeah, it's a free-to-play game, so I am a bit more relaxed about microtransactions here, especially as most of them are cosmetic and don't change the gameplay at all. But cosmetics and character items are the only thing to really play for. The paid battle pass is the best thing to get, honestly, as if you play it a lot you can get enough currency to justify buying the battle pass for the next season. You also get some pretty cool skins for some characters and personalised banners which are good for the seasons. But my biggest problem is the limited time seasonal event skins which seem like an incredible cash grab. Whilst yeah you can save up your coins and crafting materials to buy them individually, I feel like the loot boxes they encourage you to buy to get these skins are so damn expensive at 700 gold coins each or 10 for 7,000 coins which is the equivalent of around 50 pounds, basically a brand new AAA game. I know you can earn them within the game itself but to really get that heirloom melee weapon from the event you have to either save up a ton of crafting materials or gold coins or spend around $170 which in my opinion is such a greedy thing to ask players for, especially for a melee weapon which is just cosmetic anyway. At the end of the day it is down to how much you want the skins and if you save up you can get an awesome one. And let's be honest these limited time seasons are only there for one thing and that is to grab as much money off players for these limited time colourful pixels on the screen. I would have hated them more if they were solely limited limited to the event loot boxes, which I wish you could unlock by actually playing the events and completing challenges. But I still feel like EA are showing their true colours during these limited time events and are really making players open up their wallets due to a fear of missing out on these limited time skins. Again, there are a lot of cosmetics you can get from just playing the game and you can just get away with never spending a penny. But for the best looking items that will appeal to a lot of players, especially young ones, you will be spending an absolute fortune on this game and it's really not worth it. You can also unlock previous legendary items through heirloom shards, but the problem is the chances of getting them are 1 in 500 which is absolutely insane. Or you are guaranteed one with the 500th loot box. Honestly the monetization behind this game absolutely sucks. The only thing worth getting is the season pass and the heroes and that's about it. And maybe I'm just bitter that I missed out on those special skins from Season 8. But regardless, as I said before, that is totally optional and doesn't really ruin the overall experience of the game. It's just a bit tragic to see a respawn game become so money hungry in some elements.
Apex Legends still holds up really well and for me is the best BR on the market still. Its fast paced tactical combat with unique legends is great fun to play around with. Its revolutionary ping system makes communication incredibly accessible for all players. Kings Canyon is still an incredible map and with a squad of friends it is great fun especially when you get that win. There is a lot to love about Apex Legends. It certainly has that branding of a respawn entertainment game but it still feels like it's lacking that full polish. The server tick rate is a disgrace at just 20 hertz in 2021. Its monetization on seasonal event skins is disgusting even for a free to play game and the lack of any real new game modes is kind of disappointing to me. There are challenges to work for and the rank system certainly helps for goals to work for and the paid season pass does reward some unique cool looking items. But I feel like Apex is getting to a point where it needs a big challenge change to keep players interested. Season 9 is looking to be a big season with apparently a brand new game mode which should be good fun if true. I'd love to see this game go forward and really get bigger and better and not just say the same and be used as a money maker for EA and Respawn. I'd love for the stories of the characters to build to something and hopefully not Apex Legends too. I would love to see Apex Legends and its lore turn into Titanfall 3 and see Blisk back with some new predators. Once we have grown to like and have played as during Apex's time and maybe introduce us to some old faces as well as Ash and maybe Viper if the theory of him being a simulacrum is true. Who knows what the future holds but for now I do like Apex Legends. I feel it still has a ton of positives that outweigh the negatives but is it that incredible game that I could play non-stop? No sadly not. Would I have preferred Titanfall 3? Definitely. Do I think Apex has a bright future and can be merged into Titanfall 3? Well I would like to think so. But for now I stand by my statement that Apex Legends is the best battle royale on the market even to this day in 2020. And hopefully it's got big things to come. But I agree with all of you that Apex is a good game, but it's just not perfect. But those are my thoughts on Apex Legends in 2021. What do you guys think? Do you like Apex Legends? What's your favorite feature in it? And if you don't like it, why don't you like it? Are you a Titanfall diehard and just hope and pray for a new one? Let me know in the comments below. I'd like to thank you all so, so much for watching this video and for the huge support you have all given me in the past few months. It's been unreal and hopefully we reach 10K real soon. I'll leave my links to all my playlists in the link below if you wanna watch some lore videos or other reviews. I'll also leave my Discord Discord, Twitter and Twitch links there as well if you want to support this channel further. Also if you really like my content you can financially support me on Patreon or as a YouTube channel member to watch my videos a day early as well as ad free. Links will also be in the description. But speaking of my supporters I'd like to thank them real quick. Big thanks to our Big Fish, Duquesne23 and Rhino Head, our Sharks, JP, Connor and the AVP Man and our huge Megalodons, Sinus, Morgan Brazier, JJD896 and Wow Such Gaming as well as our YouTube channel member, our wise one, Jambu, as well as everyone who subscribes to me over on Twitch. All your support means the absolute world to me, and I cannot thank you enough. But that is all for now. Thank you all for watching once again, and I shall see you all in the next one. Cheers.